What is up YouTube? Today we're going to be looking at the 2022 Kyoto Champions League decks. This tournament had over 30, almost 3200 masters, I think it was 3200 registered. There was 2950 masters that participated in this tournament uh, and it has pretty much our existing format of Silver Tempest with a couple of new cards that we will get in Crown Zenith. Now their format is best of one so all the way through there will only be um, best of one games all the way through the finals which is a little bit different I know but uh, I think you had to make at least a minimum of an 8, 1, or 7, 2 record to move on to day 2 um, and go from there. Yeah, it says 7, 2 record. So shout out to Pokey Stats for compiling the top 16 lists that are a little bit difficult to find because players themselves do not often post lists in Japan. Um, you kind of have to dig through the stream games and VODs to find them yourself. So huge shout out to Pokey Stats for finding this information and we're going to go through each of these lists. So in first place, we had Regigigas, a deck that you guys might have forgotten. It's been a long time since we've seen Regigigas. Do well. I think namely the World Championships, uh, actually I think after Silver Tempest came out, uh, Regigigas kind of fell off to the wayside, people thought it would be good. Um, the list is pretty straightforward, it's got three of the Aleki, uh, looks like the same Aleki, nothing new, two Gigas, two Draco, two Ice, two Steel, two Rock, the usual, four Research, and three copies of Serena. Now Serena makes this deck better in, in, a, in a vacuum because now Serena is a discard card to put the energies in the discard pile as well as a gust effect that's something that Reggie, Reggie decks could not typically play because of the space dedicated and the finding the one boss is a little bit difficult. I don't know why the twin energies are over here. It should be with the rest of the energies. Interesting placement. But four quick balls, two um, ultra balls, and two his human heavy balls. A little bit low on the Pokemon search as well. Only only two capture energies, but it's I guess does the job. Four trekking shoes, which I really like. It just digs through deeper, deeper through your deck. Four copies of Path to the Peak to deals with decks like Duraludon, Mew, whatever. Buy that one turn against Lugia that you might need. Obviously, Manaphy Dunsparce is still a problem um, in, in a lot of situations. Four Aurora, two Speed, two Gift, two Capture, and two Twin. The two Gift, I think, is a really cool addition to the deck. Uh, gift Energy has really put it on the map, and it is one of the best cards for the deck. Now, in second place, we had Lugia, V-Star. Now, Lugia is still... Um, very, very good, obviously. This list playing both Dunsparce, Manaphy, and also playing a copy of the Stoutland to deal with those Lost Box decks. 1-1 uh, one, one on the Luminian Crobat. We see the Lost Vacuum here as a one-off copy. The four of us we're usually expecting. Three Research, two Morny, two uh, Serena, and two Bosses Orders. Now, the Energy Split is a little bit standard, I think, at this point, uh, where it's like four Powerful, four Aurora, four Capture as your Consistency cards. And then you have two DTE as well as a Hiding Dark and a V-Guard Energy. I think it's a pretty standard Lugia list across the board. Nothing too special to write home about this. This is probably like, if you had to cut and paste something, this is like pretty identical to like what Tord played uh, over at LAIC and won with, so yeah. In third place, we had uh, a deck that I guess nobody expected is Weezing Eternatus. Um, now, Galarian Weezing is when it's in the active spot, your opponent's Pokemon have no abilities. So you basically can shut off a lot of the engines. Lost Zone engine, Comfies cannot be activated. Comfies cannot use their things. Archaeops cannot be activated. Lugia cannot bring out the Archaeops with its V-Star ability. Um, I guess Mew and Genesect both cannot draw, or Genesect particularly cannot draw any cards uh, with its Fusion Strike system. So, uh, so this card, in theory, stops a lot of things from working. And I think Weezing's biggest weakness used to be um, Arceus and then Giratina in the following uh, rounds, but its linearity is so is so hard to you know beat decks with. But this person opted to take a more aggressive approach, playing a three three Eternatus line to kind of bolster the damage that you might be missing to clean up the game after you're doing this the four damage counters in between turns with the wheezing into the crowbats to draw you cards and go through your deck as quickly as possible and eventually you can even use the crowbat vmax to clean up the game if you need to and bounce back into the wheezing which i think is really smart his human sneezler as your radiant pokemon to just make sure that uh, it gives an additional uh, amount of damage to your eternatus as well as it adds two more damage counters uh, the goons also adding more damage uh, down the line as well so i like this deck it seems really cool but i don't know if it's actually good um because they did lose to the Lugia player, I believe, and it's built to beat Lugia with two copies of Boost Shake trying to get the uh, Wheezing out on the first turn, two copies of Force Seal Stone. So on turn one, you can go ahead and try to put a Crobat down, Force Seal Stone it, get a Coughing down, and then uh, go into the Wheezing on turn one by able, like being able to grab some combination of Hiding Dark and a Retreat option like a Switch, something like that. So you're just kind of playing aggressively into getting a turn one Wheezing, setting up your board behind it, and once your Wheezing is has done the job, you can pivot into things like your Eternatus and clean up the game. Now, the problem I do see with this deck is that the there's a lot of two prizers on the bench, so our V Pokemon specifically, so Serena is live, which is in almost every deck right now, so Serena can always bring something up and circumvent this Weezing, uh, which is something I don't like. 
In fourth place, we had a Lost Box deck. Um, this one's sporting, it's the Kyogre version. This one is sporting the Zygarde, which I don't really know what it does, but it's a lot of damage. And the cool part about this list that we don't have just yet, so I need you guys to ignore that, is the Sky Seal Stone, which says if your basic V Pokemon knocks out a Pokemon, you take one additional prize card. So this Raikou is basically taking an extra prize card on like Lugia's is the, is the idea. And so it's a very stock standard um, I think, um, Lost Box list, nothing crazy to write home about it. Uh, Azul's group has been dominating with this recently, and so I think this deck will continue to see a lot of play. And then in fifth place, we had Mew, VMAX. Um, this one is a very standard list with one copy of Judge as opposed to the usual two or three we've been seeing recently. Uh, three Path to the Peak and four Vacuum, which is just a very heavily aggressive build geared towards trying to beat Lugia, trying to beat Regis, trying to beat Lost Box to stick them with a worse hand. One copy of Temple of Sinnoh, I guess to just... Maybe avoid that powerful turn or that evil tall turn if you can, um, because but because Lugia doesn't have that many outs and they are not really finding the best ways to kind of deal with uh, that if they can. Uh, but overall, deck is very strong. I think Mew is going to be Mew. If you don't run into, run into Drapions too much, I think you'll be okay. In sixth place, there's another Lost Box variant. This one playing two copies of Zamazenta. Now, Zamazenta is just a heavy header. There's 100 plus 100 more. If you, I think your opponent took a prize card last turn, a card we don't have as well. So it's just a better Snorlax, I think, is the theory behind it, um, as well as playing the Sky Seal Stone. And this time, there's two applicable uh, targets. I guess three with Illuminian as well, if you're going to attack with that. But just a heavier Mirage Gate build with two Raihans, uh, kind of gearing towards any of your attackers, big attackers. The Raihans can power up the... Um, Zabazenta can power up the Raikou, the Drapion, the Luminion, whatever you need it to power up in that particular turn. So a less of a lost mind-centric strategy and more of a uh, Mirage Gate. I need to get these like secondary attackers up and running and close out the game with that power level. Uh, in seventh place, we had another Lugia V-Star. This one focusing around double Luminion and a Kyogre. Uh, Amazing Rare Kyogre seems very difficult to pull off, but I think the idea is just that if you can pull this off two times, which I don't think you ever actually pull it off two times, you can do a lot of damage to just Put a lot, just put a lot of damage on the board. But I guess if you only do it one time, then maybe everything is one shotable via Lugia, or or Archeops, I guess. I don't know. I don't really get the the Kyogre. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I I don't really see the merit in playing this Kyogre because it's heavy energy requirement and the limited payoff for it because every deck plays Manaphy. Now there is a Professor Burnett in the deck and a Bird Keeper, so there is a way to circumvent this paralysis with the per Bird Keeper. One copy of Path as well, which again, very very weird. I mean, I guess. Duraldon maybe is the, the concern here. I don't know. Um, uh, it's, it's an interesting list. It's an interesting list. I'll give it that. Eighth place, I believe, we had another Lugia V-Star deck. Uh, that's a Crobat, I think. So Crobat. Luminion. Very standard. 3-3. Three, three. There's a Raikou here as well. Um, this looks very similar to the LAIC. Oh, there's two Path. Never mind. It's not similar to anything I've done. Never mind. Uh, there's two <laughs> There's two Path to the Peak and a Parasol. So it's kind of geared to play for the Mirror, it looks like, or trying to play for the Mirror. Um, with four Auroras, four Powerfuls. A Hiding Heat. Two DTE, a two capture, a twin as well, and I, th I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing those supporters, but I'm assuming that's three research, two Marnie, a Roxanne, two Serena, and two Boss. So kind of going for that path Roxanne strategy towards the end of the game, if possible. So a very interesting take on Lugia. A lot of um, indecisiveness on kind of what the deck is trying to do. Um, I think, but I guess you should beat Mirror. I'm not entirely sure. In ninth place, we have Lugia Weezing. This was probably the most interesting deck to me of the weekend because I have no idea how this works. I watched the stream game, and I'm not entirely sure how consistently you can pull off the turn one Weezing um, until you, I guess, set up your board. But I think the idea is just you play a thin line of a thinner line of Lugia, uh, less Archeops, and a thin-ish line of Weezing um, with one Evatol because you you know you have the Hide and Darks already, uh, a Raikou to kind of do a ton of damage um, in Mirror and stuff like that. You have a Luminian, a, a Stoutland. A Dunsparce Manaphy combo, just a, just taking out the Zard, basically. Just saying we don't need Zard, which I, I don't know if I agree with. I think Zard is just a super easy card to put into anything because Aurora's already there, right? So you can just cut the Dunsparce probably and put it in. Um, three Quick Ball, four Ultra, and three Incense. So a little bit less um, of the, like, normal uh, resources. Three copies of Escape Rope, which is heavily, heavily, heavily geared to try to get the coughing into the active spot on turn one. And then go into the Hiding Dark Ascension as quickly as possible. There's three Hiding Dark and four Aurora, which all can activate Ascension. And I guess it's a pretty good energy typing for Evatol as well. One Vacuum, three Marnie, three Path. You're basically just trying to stick them, I guess, with the Weezing in the early game. Get a couple of procs in until you get your Lugia up and running, and then retreat into the um, Weezings and do, uh, like, our Lugias and take Knockouts. I think that's the whole point of this one. Uh, it's an interesting deck. I don't know if it's actually good. I don't think Weezing is actually that necessarily good. But um, I guess you have an edge in Mirror and stuff like that if you can actually get the Weezing up. It's very interesting. In 10th place, we had Blissey Miltank, uh, an, an old archetype that we haven't really seen 
too much limelight employing the four Marnie four path strategy with 4k of toughness this deck had an auto loss into Giratina in the last format which is why we didn't see too much play and it doesn't have a great Mew matchup but I think you can deal with Lugia pretty well by spamming these Evitals Cry of Destruction getting rid of a lot of those energies spam that go into the Sydneys eventually if they're hiding energies in their hand um, power up your guys kind of pick up stuff and uh, go into what you need to do. There's two V-Guard energies, which is also a little bit of a buff to Blissey because now with V-Guard plus Cape, Blissey has a lot of HP, and you can kind of abuse that until uh, you can go into the Hyper Potions to play the game that you want to play. So I don't know if this deck is necessarily very good, but it was cheeky, and I think you're playing like a, like a weird, aggressive control strategy with this one. And 11th, we had Mew VMAX. Um, I think this is like a pretty stock standard build with the two... Uh, the two cities as well as two path to the peak as opposed to the build we saw earlier with a heavier path I think it was like three path or four path, which is crazy. I still think that's nuts to me It's weird that Mew is now the deck that plays all the path um, when it used to be the one that wanted to beat the path or defeat the path um, And now it's got a parasol as well, which I, I really like the inclusion of parasol in Mew I don't know if it's actually very strong, but I think parasol is very good at dealing with Lugia as a whole Or like Evital that one Evital turn forced him into having that really important uh, attack they need to attack with Lugia in one shot, and four powerfuls is pretty hard to find, uh, plus choice belt, uh, if you have the Oracle right down. So three crams is interesting. I don't know if I agree with that. I think you just play one four seal stone and play an additional cram, um, because I think cram is just like one of the most broken cards in the deck. Um, heavy copies of Marnie, I agree with that. No Silene is interesting. I do think with a build like this, you kind of want to have one copy of Silene if possible, but yeah. And then in, I think, 12th place, I, I think that's where we were, or 11th place... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, so we're in 12th place. Was Arceus, Flying Pika, Tapu Koko, VMAX. A deck that I don't really think has a lot of merit. But it, I guess it does beat Lugia if you set up perfectly and go first. Um, with four paths to the peak, four Marnies. And playing a strategy to kind of stick them on that one turn. But I guess if you don't do that, you just insta-lose. Which is something I really don't like. because But you do have two Parasols, so I guess you can like... Parasol the Pika and just say like, hey, you're not eva me this turn. Um... Which I think is the whole point, but there's a 1-1 Pika with no heavy balls, which means you're not actually finding it on the turns you need it. I think Lost Box is probably a fine matchup because the Pika, the 1-1 Pika should carry. I don't really know the ta why the Tapu Koko VMAX is in here, but if that thing gets cut, I think it's super okay. Like, I think just playing heavier Pika makes sense. Uh, and then we had another Eternatus, uh, which is crazy to me. Uh, two Eternatus in the top 16 of this gigantic event. Uh, playing very similar to the other one with a Drapion this time. I think there's no harm in playing a Drapion, even though you are hitting Mew for Dark-type weakness. Uh, playing a Drapion seems completely okay because it... I don't know. Do you actually need Drapion? I don't know if you need Drapion. Uh, you probably don't need Drapion, even though it's like completely free to beat Mew already. Um, you can just probably commit to playing the Eternatus strategy. But I mean, I guess they can outrace you. And maybe the Drapion's good there, but I just really don't want to open Drapion. That's probably like one of the worst starters in this deck. So we're just not going to play Drapion if I play this deck. Um, three Sinnohs. Uh, I like that. Two Hiding Darks to Retreat. I like that as well. Really cool deck overall. Wheezing. And then we had another Lugia, another stock standard list across the board. I don't think there's anything special about this one. Um, the text makes sense. The double Luminion makes sense to me. Um, heavy captures, all of this makes sense. Uh, and then we had a Mew. And this Mew is a little bit interesting because it played Heroes Metal, which forces Lugia again to have the Evital on the first knockout. Um, or forces decks playing Drapion to find something other than Drapion to knock it out on the first knockout because Drapion just means... Um, that they'll only take two prizes, which then they can, I guess, a Mew can trade efficiently with the Lost Cities. Um, this one's playing a Glimwood Tangle and a Jirachi Prism, a Radiant Jirachi, which is really interesting because I guess they just want to say, I have that one turn where I can just cheese you and take a knockout. Um, but don't know if it's good. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And I guess if it gets knocked out in return, you take three cards from your deck and put them in your hand. Um, but it's an interesting inclusion. I think it's a little bit of creativity outside the box, and it like acts as pseudo for a seal stone. And if your opponent goes around the Jirachi, then you get another chance to double flip for... A free knockout, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's good, but it seems interesting. I like it. And then finally in 16th, we have another Lost Box variant, very similar to the one we saw earlier, with one Sky Seal Stone playing the Double Zamazenta, um, as well as the Raikou Drapion. Um, this seems like to be the most popular build over there in Japan with these Zamazenta and these other heavy hitters to kind of get to the point where you can use Kyogre, but this build isn't even playing Kyogre. So um, just an interesting build. Heavier Raihans, heavier just Mirage Gate uh, focus. So... Um, I like this. I like this build, I think, of the deck um, moving forward, like, in the future or whatever. Like, Kyogre is a good late like, game closer. Zekrom is a great paralysis target. And I think playing Drapion makes a lot of sense, especially given that uh, Piper just won a regionals with Mewtwo control. So there you have it, guys. That is the top 16 decks from the Kyoto Champions League. If you guys enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys for another video later.